So if you have just purchased a Tesla or another electric vehicle and you are looking for all the home charging options, you have clicked the right video. Today we're gonna break down everything that you need to know about Tesla as well as other EV home charging. We're gonna cover a lot of cables and plugs and, and all the options that you have including a charging station, what is Tesla's mobile connector, the wall connector, we'll cover it all in this video. I decided to do this video, especially in the light of recent events where Tesla decided to not include any home charging product for your Tesla. So when you purchase a new car, back in the days you used to get something called a mobile connector and this is what it looks like here, free of charge included in your Tesla. When I purchased mine a few years ago, they used to include both 240 volt as well as a 110 volt connector with the car so I didn't have to pay anything extra and I was able to get both fast charging as well as slow charging with regular and an upgraded plug at the same time and I didn't have to pay anything for charging, at least the charging equipment to charge my Tesla. But that is not the case today. If you are to purchase a new Tesla today, you don't get anything. So you do have to look at what are the options out there and I want to do a detailed breakdown of all of those here for you all today. I also wanted to give a quick shout out to my friends at afterpump.com for sending me this super awesome and very relevant shirt for today's video. Please do check them out. I have a link down below in the description. They make t-shirts, stickers, and other EV friendly merch. Please note that I am not a licensed electrician and the information that I'm sharing here in this video are for educational purposes only. I do not warrant for the accuracy and completeness of the information provided in this video. I'm just sharing the information that I have learned based on my research of electric vehicle charging. Before we talk about all the chargers and the plugs, let's break down various types of outlets and what do they mean for electric vehicles. Outlets play a huge role and there's a big difference between the two types of outlets. You have to first pick the type of outlet you will use before picking an EV charger. So just remember, this next couple of slides are gonna be all about outlets. And then we'll talk about the chargers. First, you have your regular 110 volt outlets. These are really common outlets that you use on a regular basis to plug in all of your electronics. And you will likely have one of these in your garage. These are considered level one chargers in the EV world. Then we have these 240 volt outlets that are considered level two chargers. These are typically outlets that power your electric range and electric dryers. Using a 110 volt outlet to typically find everywhere, you are only going to get anywhere from two to four miles of charge per hour, regardless of the charger that you pick. So if you leave your car plugged in overnight and charging, you'll probably only add less than 40 miles of range. On the other hand, with a 240 volt outlet, we typically see 28 to 32 miles per hour of charge, depending on the charger. Some of these outlets, depending on the breaker size, could give you over 50 miles per hour of charge. In comparison, the regular outlet will take about five to six days to fully charge your Tesla Model 3 versus level two outlets will give you enough juice to fully charge your Model 3 just overnight. The reason why there is such a big difference between the two types of outlets has to do with the size of electrical wire and the breaker. Typically, the regular 110 volt outlets take 15 amp breakers and a 12 to 14 gauge wires. The 240 volt outlet typically are built with 50 amp breakers and six to eight gauges of wire. The gauges number lower they are, thicker the wire size is. Higher the current, which is measured in amps, along with the thicker wire, you get faster charging. The 110 volt is great because you don't require any additional installation. You can even use a regular extension cord if your charger doesn't reach the outlet location. Picking a charger that works with the regular level one outlet means you can plug your car anywhere. This is a great option if you have a short commute and you are okay with your car getting just two to four miles of charge per hour. The obvious drawback of picking a charger that only works with a 110 volt outlet is that you'll have a slow charging speed. That might put some range anxiety. When I first purchased my Tesla, I relied on the regular outlet for charging and sometimes I was not able to use my car simply because I ran too low on charge and it wasn't charging fast enough. You also miss out on the time of use electrical rates that typically give you a great discount if you only charge your car in the middle of the night. By the way, I have an entire video covering various utility rates and monitoring your EV charging power. I will link that video in the description below. Moving on to the chargers that support 240 volt outlets, you get fast charging. 
You can also take advantage of the time of use rates if available in your area and you get enough charge that you can safely precondition your EV before leaving the house. The biggest drawback of this option, aside from more expensive chargers, are the 240 volt outlets are not typically found in your garage. You'll need an electrician to install it for you. And the cost will vary based on the electrician that you hire, the rates in your area, and the system that you currently have. If you have a really old house, you might need additional neutral and ground cables to be installed. And it might be very expensive for you because your panel might be really old and you might not have space to run another electrical connection to the 240 volt outlet because this does take a lot of power. So you're going to need to be super careful and do this safely because if your system is underpowered and you just add another breaker to the breaker box, then all of a sudden every time you're charging your car, your other appliances might not work, there might be flickering, so electrician is going to determine that for you. They're gonna come out there, look to your breaker box, go through every single item that you have in your house, and then tell you this is what you need to do. Now, in an event where you do not have enough space on your breakers, then you're gonna need to purchase another extra breaker box and then install it uh, right next to your breaker box or anywhere you want to do. So you're going to need to purchase that and that is going to also be quite expensive on that case. Now let's discuss various charger options that you can get with each type of outlet. Let's just start with the level one, AKA regular outlet. For Tesla, you can get a mobile connector bundle with just the 110 volt plug. This comes with a 20 foot cable and currently it costs $275. This is the most affordable option to get slow charger directly from Tesla. This price might fluctuate based on Elon's tweet. You can also opt in for a level one charger like the one from Lectron. These chargers are compatible with both Tesla and non-Tesla EVs and you can expect to get two to four miles per hour charge with this charger. There are many generic level one chargers like this one you can find on Amazon and typically the pricing is $150 to $250. For non-Tesla EVs like the Nissan Leaf, the manufacturer actually includes a level one charger with the car at no additional cost to you. Moving on to the level two charging options. For Teslas, the most affordable level two charging directly from Tesla is the mobile connector with the NEMA 1450 adapter. That currently costs $400. The main benefit of the level two mobile connector from Tesla is that you can take this charger with you and charge your Tesla wherever you can find a NEMA 1450 outlet. Next option for Tesla is the wall connector. This is the fastest home charging option Tesla currently offers for level two charging. The wall connector plugs into a NEMA 1450 outlet and charges your Tesla at a faster rate of up to 44 miles per hour. If you don't have a Tesla, but you would like to still purchase this wall connector, you can use an adapter that I recently reviewed from Lectern which allows you to use Tesla charger to charge other electric vehicles. The wall connector currently costs $495. Just a reminder that for this wall connector to work, you're gonna need a 240 volt outlet. Your regular 110 volt outlet is not going to give you that fast charging rate. You can also purchase a 240 volt mobile connectors from places like Lectern or other manufacturers. You can expect to get same charging rate as the Tesla's level two mobile connector somewhere in the vicinity of 28 miles per hour. You just need your J1772 adapter that came with your Tesla. These types of chargers work directly without needing any adapters for other EVs that are compatible with EVSC SAE system. Typically these chargers cost around 250 to $400. The final option for level two charging is a charging station like this one. These stations are wall mounted and can provide equivalent charging rate of Tesla wall connector. Lectern, Chargepoint, Grizzly, Wallbox are pretty popular brands for this type of stations. These are also the stations you typically see on workplaces and businesses for level two charging. Lectern actually sent us one of these charging stations for us to install and review today. The installation and functionality we'll show next is very similar to other level two charging stations. This station currently costs $442, but it also comes with the J1772 Tesla adapter. If you were to purchase this adapter from Tesla, it would cost you an additional $50. So this station is slightly more affordable than purchasing a wall connector from Tesla, 
and this is also compatible with other electric vehicle. They actually send you a template to drill holes on your wall. Use the template to make those holes. Insert the plastic anchors that came with your packaging into those four holes you just made. Stick the back plate and align the holes. Insert the four screws and secure them. You can either use a Phillips head screwdriver or a drill to secure the screws. We'll then install the cable organizer. This is the exact same process. We'll just make four holes using the drill and then insert the anchors into the wall. Then we'll align the cable organizer and secure those four screws. Now we're ready to install the charging station itself. First, you can hang the cable into the organizer bracket we just installed. Then all you have to do is slide the charging station into the back plate we installed earlier. This might take you a little bit of time to feel those tabs, but it'll eventually secure itself with the back plate. Now go ahead and plug the NEMA 1450 connector to the outlet. You can also install this plug holder by following the same steps of drilling and installing the plate. This is so you can neatly secure the charging plug. There's a power button on the side of the charging station. If you have a Tesla, you can use the J1772 adapter and plug it into your Tesla. To unplug it, you just have to press on the top button and pull the charger out. You can then either remove the J1772 adapter or leave it hanging on the wall. For my Tesla Model 3, the current rapidly went up and stabilized right around 32.5 amps. On the Tesla screen, it was showing 29 miles per hour charge at 238 volt. Keep in mind that my car was already quite full, so the charge rate could be higher when my car has low battery. This looks pretty cool and works as expected, easy to use and put away. Let's try this charger on a Lisa Leaf. The process is the same except you don't need the extra adapter for the Leaf as it can take the SAE EVSE plug. You can see it started charging right away and the rate was around 27 amp. This is another thing you have to consider that each car will have a slightly different charge rate based on their onboard charging specification. I saw a huge difference on the charge rate on the Nissan Leaf compared to the regular 110 volt. Using the charger that came with this Leaf and plugged in into the level 1 outlet, I was getting 1.4 kilowatt of power and it was showing it could take 10 hours for the car to fully charge from this point. With this new charging station, I was able to get 6.6 .6 kilowatt and it is showing about 3 hours to fully charge. That is everything I have for you all today. Hopefully this video was helpful, but please, please do let me know in the comment section as well as my email or my social media. If you have any questions about home charging at Tesla, I have a lot of tips that I can share, some softwares for monitoring your charging habit and whatnot. So I have a lot of resources that I would like to share with you. So please do reach out if you have any questions and if you just would like to learn more about some of these products. If you did find this video useful, please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this in the future. I'll be back again with another video like this. Thank you very much for watching. Namaste.